Hi guys, welcome to another Dave Downey Fly Time video production. Today we're going to be doing a wee still water fly. Uh, but here I'll be sharing all my favourite flies and methods of tying them. So it can make catching fish for you guys easier. Uh, and, and basically showing you the different ways I tie flies and how I tie them. Uh, all the flies that I'm tying on these videos I personally use and they all catch fish, not just the angler. At the end of each video, there'll be a wee list of materials required to tie the fly, just in case you missed it, in the video, and also a link to my online shop where you can purchase the flies and the materials required to make these coloured patterns. I hope you enjoy the video, and you'll pass on the word on, about my channel to all your pals, all your fishing mates, your fishing clubs, uh, just so you can get the guys actually watching the videos and catching fish. So today I'm going to be tying just a standard black buzzer. It's pretty easy, pretty, pretty, nothing fancy about it. Uh, what we're going to need is that's a uh, you can tie them on straight hooks or curved hooks. I'm tying them on fully mill check nymph hook, which is a curved hook, a size 10. We're going to need that. We're going to need some 14 0 wisp black thread. We're going to need some silver wire for the rib. As I say it's very, very basic. Uh, we're going to need some orange goose bites for the th uh, cheeks, and we're going to need some UTC and large for the thorax cover. Alright, so what we're going to do is just start here. Obviously if you're not fishing competitions, international competitions, and you fancy a wee bead on it, you could put a bead on this as well. You could put a glass bead on it. Uh, you know, a lot of guys will fish buzzers with beads. Or in America as they call it, chrominoids. So, I'm going to run the thread down to where we roughly want it. I like tying it on curved hooks, as I think the buzzer's obviously that shape when it's coming up, it straightens up as it's swimming up. I can see a couple of wee bits of black thread sticking up there, so we'll just trim them off. Okay, then we'll go back halfway up. Alright, so that's us, we're back halfway up. So now we want a wee bit of silver wire. It says it's pretty basic, you can make buzzers really, really fancy. Uh, I do like tying on the strip quills as well. So what I've done with the wire is I've tied it in so that it's roughly where the thorax is going to begin. So there's no wire where the thorax will be but it then lets me know where I need to stop. So just keep going down, touching turns, don't want any gaps. Keep going until we get to the end. That's us there. Okay. Then we'll go back up. Right, so we're going back up again. This time we'll go right up to the end of the wire. Right, really depends on how you fancy your buzzers. Some people like them really super skinny. Some people like them dead fat and chunky. If I was going to tie a fat and chunky one, I would use thicker thread. Because I'll be here all day with this if I wanted to build a really fat body on this buzzer. You could use floss, but I would find floss tends to split a bit more. So I much prefer to use thread. While we're talking about thread, I tend to use the, the sheer wisp most of the time because it's 14 oh, it's really fine, and I just find it does a really good job of what, what I want it to do. So we're now going to run the wire. I says it's really really basic, it's nothing fancy, you could have a bit of peril going up the back, you could do what you want, but no, I just want a basic buzzer, right? So that's us got the silver wire, so we're now going to start building the thorax up. Now I'm not an amazing buzzer fisher, I'm, I'm quite happy to put my hand up and say that, but I do catch on these. Uh, it's not my favorite first method to call, I, I don't particularly like fishing it, unless the fish are really switched on. Right, so we're going to keep going with that. Just keep building it. The thorax up. So we're now going to get a bit of UTC. This is large, obviously if you go to a smaller 14 or whatever, you're going to use a medium. So just catch it in at the top. And just take it back to where you want your thorax to begin. So it's always, I always have it just in front of the last wrap of silver wire. Right, and um, we'll keep building it up. Now, 
Dan says if I was making a really big thick buzzer, you could probably go and make a cup of tea by the time I got this thorax finished with this thread. Right, I'm going to get my goose by it. So we want two, two goose by it. I always tend to cut the first three or four millimetres off. So, we'll get the first one in. So that's on the back. And then we'll tie this one in. It's almost like using match strips of feather off of the uh, wings of flies when you're tying the old traditional wet flies. You want to try and keep the, the bias roughly the same thickness and the same size. So I always try to cut the two of them together. Right, I'm just making sure I'm covering all the thread up. Not that it will matter because the bias would cover that area but I just like to do it for my own sake. Right, at this point, I said before, for the sake of we're getting a few things caught here. Pull that off of there. Catch it back in. For the sake of three or four millimetres of thread, I'll do a wet finish. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the bayet forward. So that's the back one. So we're going to do it four or five turns and you should be able to just pull it and it'll rip off. Same again though. I'm not taking any chances. So I will tie another wrap, do another wet finish, and then we're going to do the same on this side. So I'm just going to catch that in and then rip it off. Okay, then we'll do another wee wet finish. I say some guys use crisp packets and all sorts. I says I just like to use buyets. I was just going to pull the thorax over, but I'm going to stretch it a little. I want it to kind of mould around the hook. So I'll stretch it, and then we'll catch it in. And that's you got your thorax cover, as you can see. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Then we'll lift it and trim it. Push that a little bit down. Then we'll do another finish. And then we'll tidy the head up. So there's a wee gap on the head there where I can see the peril coming through. So I want to just tidy that up. So just tidy that up. And then do our standard two bit finishes. Okay. Now there it is, it's just a basic buzzer. It's a nice shape. By it's got a nice colour and that little bit of flash in the thorax changes it a little bit. So obviously you can tie it in different colours, all of works as well. Uh, but I, I do like it in that. Now you might want to resin it. I don't particularly like resin in these because uh, of the shape of them, so I tend to just varnish them. And, and what I'll do is I'll try to put a really thin coat of varnish on first. But I'll, what that'll do is obviously sink into the thread so I'm just going to varnish the whole fly I say use resin if you want you know it's really your own choice but personally I prefer to varnish them and I'll usually give it maybe three coats don't be tempted to chuck it on dead thick because what will happen is when the fly is drying the varnish will go around the edges and you'll end up with a blob at the bottom, which is what you don't want. You want it to be nice and even. And that's it. So that's just a wee pearl backed standard buzzer, which is pretty damn easy to tie and catch his fish. Doesn't have to be anything super duper fancy. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it guys. Hope you're going to follow me on Facebook, David C. Downey. You can follow me on my Instagram, it's Dave Downey Fly Fishing. Uh, check out my guiding site, www.davedowneyfishing.com and my online shop, uh, which has some blogs and stuff on it as well, which is www.fly-fishingworld.com. 
So thanks for watching another Dave Downey Fly Time video production. Have a good day and have some good days fishing.